Welcome back to Cheddar's opening bell, everyone. I do want to talk climate change. The Trump administration pushing ahead with plans to auction off drilling rights in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, a bold move just weeks ahead of the new administration. And joining us now to discuss is Miranda Green, energy and environment reporter. I'm Miranda, it's good to see you this morning. So explain what exactly is going on here. So the Trump administration is moving forward with kind of last minute efforts to open up a lease sale at the Alaska, uh, the, the, Las the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, also known as ANWAR by environmentalists. So this is uh, millions of acres of, uh, it's actually 1.6 million acres on the coastal plain in Alaska of untouched uh, refuge territory. So this is home to migrating caribou and to polar bears and other Arctic wildlife. And there, this is something that Republicans have been pushing to do for years. It was actually first authorized in 2017 by a Republican-led Congress. And it's something that the Trump administration has promised to finalize and looks like he is pushing to do in the last days of his presidency knowing very well that a Biden administration is likely to not go forward with it and to uh, to not authorize lease sales on this land. OK, is there anything, Miranda, that can stop this? So it would be very hard for a Biden administration to reverse these lease sales once they are finalized. Essentially, uh, the Trump administration has 60 days. It's a very tight deadline going forward uh, to finalize these sales and authorize oil and gas companies the ability to drill. Once they have these lease sales in hand, they have about 10 years to decide whether they are going to start drilling on this uh, this land or if they simply could just be holding on to it. But what the Biden administration could do is it could come in and make things very hard for them. It could put in more regulations that essentially will make it more expensive for oil and gas companies to drill on this land. You have to keep in mind there's no infrastructure up there. So already oil and gas companies are facing a big economic hurdle for those who do think that they might want to take this up. And this is at a time when oil and gas is already at an all-time low. It's not very lucrative to be able to start drilling right now, especially in a place it's not easy access. Mm -hmm. uh, environmental groups are also looking to be um, putting lawsuits against this. There are already four lawsuits, four separate lawsuits in court that are challenging the Trump administration's overall oil and gas policy. So if one of those lawsuits were to be upheld by a court, it is likely that they would invalidate any of these oil and gas leases that come from the sale, especially since it is being pushed through at such a final time in this mm -hmm. presidency. Miranda, is there data or how can we gauge uh, the impact that this would have on climate change? Well, it is known. There have been um, studies that have actually come out uh, by the administration itself just in the last couple of years that a quarter of all emissions that um, come out of the United States come from public lands. So that shows that the extraction industries and those industries that the, the administration and that Congress is allowing to, um, to drill on public land is actually a large contributor to the overall emissions that we have here in the country. So, of course, that contributes to the global sphere as well. And so by administration that would be looking to re-engage and to reconnect in the Paris Climate Accord would have to take that, you know, into consideration, especially as Biden himself has come forward as part of his climate plan and promised that no more uh, drilling would occur on oil, uh, no more oil and gas drilling would occur on public lands. So uh, the Trump administration, I think, is very aware of this. And uh, and I, I don't think it hurts that they know that this would hurt the Biden administration by pushing this forward. Mm -hmm. And how would it impact a U.S. oil and gas drilling in America? Would there be an impact? Uh, it would likely, you know, this is part of Donald Trump's um, energy independence policy. It is something that he has been pushing forward his entire career. And this is probably something that he is considering kind of the capstone of that legacy. His idea is that the, this drilling would bring jobs to America. And there are industries up in Alaska that are looking forward to this. There are Native American, uh, Native indigenous communities up there that do hope that this might bring jobs. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really unclear how much industry is actually interested in these plots. And we won't know that until the lease sales happen 60 days from now or potentially longer. Uh, because again, it's just very, um, it's very rural terrain. It's hard to get to. And it's hard to tell how much they will ultimately gain from drilling in these areas at the end of the day.
Is there the expectation as an energy and environment reporter uh, that Biden can be effective in terms of trying to reverse climate change or getting the U.S. on a path uh, to a better position? Sure, yes. I think that most people, um, most environmentalists, most people who um, have been climate activists are very hopeful that a Biden administration can bring us back at least on a better path than the path that we've been going on under Trump in terms of tackling climate change. Um, and he can do this through a lot of executive actions and through a lot of authority over key agencies that regulate emissions, like the Environmental Protection Agency and the Interior Department, which is the one that's determining and, and, and holding these lease sales. Uh, I I think that, of course, his hands are going to be bound in terms of an overarching climate bill, something like the Green New Deal is not going to pass with a Republican-led Senate. But at the end of the day, uh, an America that is connected to the global sphere, that is uh, pushing through policies that are going to uh, make stricter um, environmental um, uh, environmental regulations is going to promote uh, a green economy, promote solar energy, promote wind energy, I think is, is a move towards kind of a new direction that and acknowledges that we are part of a warming globe and that humans play a part in it. All right, Miranda Green, we need to leave it there. She's an energy and environment reporter. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you.